officially packing meat back to camp. And I'll tell you what, these black flies are vicious. Like, vicious, vicious. Big old nasty bites in my arms from them. Anywhere they can get to. It tells you to watch out for the grizzly bears. But it's the flies that really get you. They're all over my face right now. All right, I'm gonna put away this camera so I can deal with these flies. Whoo! Happy packed. You gotta love it. I got one load back. It only took me about 25 minutes, but that was a miserable 25 minutes. Oh my gosh. So when you're, uh, you got a heavy pack, every step where you would before drop eight inches, now it seems like you drop like 12 inches in the soil. And just like water, it's like a sponge every step. And the black flies were just mauling my face. Not a lot of fun. We got one more trip to do and then it'll be over. It's all part of the process. I was just sitting here thinking about what a wild few minutes that was down there. Solid group of caribou. It was easily the biggest group that I've seen so far. Come across the river, came up, shadowed them, just really kind of like pinched him perfectly. And it's just too bad. The bull I was gonna shoot, when I drew back, the bull I was gonna shoot was really big, quite a bit bigger I think than the one I shot. But I wasn't gonna take that shot with him with another caribou standing directly behind him. Which is why you see me like switch and then just guess at 40. And I guess I kind of looked like 40. I don't know if it was you know, a little over, a little under, but it was right around there and it just worked. So and then luckily that caribou didn't run more than whatever it was, 70 yards or so before he tipped over. Today, luck was on my side. Almost looks like a little thunderstorm rolling in. So I'm gonna have a snack. I'm leaving the camera here this time and I'm gonna hoof it back over and grab the rest of the meat and the antlers. Come back, hang it, and then uh, get ready to have a little heart for dinner tonight. I think Andrew will be excited about that. So I'm gonna need a little heart. Got a three course meal planned. Uh, first we're gonna have a little bit of heart as our appetizer. I'm gonna cut up a little bit more heart, put it in my dehydrated meal. And then for dessert, we have miso soup. Should be real nice. First, I gotta trim this bad boy up. Cut the valves off. will make uh, pretty much any, any meal you're having taste better.
That's really good. Wow, that's really good. That should go really good. Now that my tag has been filled, we have one tag left to fill, and that is Andrew's moose tag. So we're gonna spend the rest of our time in here, which is just another couple of days, trying to find a legal bull moose for Andrew and hopefully get uh, get a shot on one. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow as we continue the adventure. That was an interesting way to start the day. That moose coming right into camp. Andrew went about, <clears throat> I don't know, 200 yards from camp, gave some calls, forgot something, came back to grab it. And by the time he got back out to the edge of the meadow, there was a bull coming in fast. Unfortunately, it was not a legal bull. A legal bull in this unit has to be 50 inches or four brow tines on one side, and that one had three brow tines on one and two on the other. And it wasn't 50 inches. So, got some video of him, but I played around with him a bit, but it was not a shooter bowl. So, Andrew is going upriver again, to try and find another bowl. Uh, to, for me today, this is like a camp chore kind of day. I need to debone my meat and get it ready for uh, pickup. A plane should come in today as long as the weather holds and pick up my meat and take it out of here and get it in a cooler. And I've just got a bunch of other random stuff to do today, but today is kind of a down day for me. So I've been keeping an eye out on that meat too so I can see it from here and I can see downwind pretty well. Keep an eye out to see if a bear is coming on it overnight and it doesn't look like it has, so should be good. No bears yet. I say that and then I turn behind me just to make sure there aren't any bears right behind me. It has been a day of not doing a whole heck of a lot, but Andrew is back in camp and we're gonna go out for the evening hunt. We're gonna go down river this time, which we haven't done yet. So, see what's going on down there. Looking for a moose. Called in one this morning. Just need a legal one kill. Here we go. I just want a real fun brush, swamp, tundra walk full of black flies. Kind of miserable. Didn't see any moose. Saw some moose sign. Saw a few caribou. That's about it. Now we're about a half mile from camp. Half mile left of swamp walking. I think that's gonna do it for the day. So tomorrow's our last full day to try and get Andrew a moose. We've had moose down in front of camp twice now. And the rut really hasn't hit, so could be good tomorrow. Could be on. Could get a big bowl to wander 
right by our camp in the morning. So we'll see. I'm, I'm worked. So I'm gonna call today, put away this camera. We'll see you tomorrow. Dump rain all night last night. And now it's just starting to clear up. It's kinda not exactly early in the morning, but it's still morning. We've just kind of been hanging out around camp calling, seeing if we could pull in a bull. We had wolves howling around our camp last night, over kind of near where I killed my caribou. So I'm just assuming that those wolves were on my caribou carcass. Not really sure how that's going to affect the moose. Could affect them. <laughs> May not affect them. I don't know until we actually start hunting here. But so far, no moose. Andrew's up on our uh, glassing point, and I'm just now heading over there right now. Just a stunningly beautiful day right now. <laughs> Off the, the water, off of all the tundra and the brush, and the trees. Gorgeous. Maybe one of the best parts about hiking here is that as you're hiking up, you got blueberries all around you. You can just uh, Tell yourself that I'm stopping, not because I'm tired, but because I want to eat some blueberries. Like right here is a good example. Got some blueberries right here if you can see them on camera. It's not that I'm tired of climbing, I just want to eat some blueberries. It's easy on the ego that way. Not tired and shoot some blueberries. So we got a little bit of a little bit of good news, a little bit of bad news type situation here. Good news is it has cleared up and is a gorgeous, crisp fall day. It's not raining on us. Bad news is we haven't really seen any game animals um, except for one bull moose, which is important, but it was about four miles away and it disappeared in some timber. And we, we may never see that moose again. And certainly Andrew is not allowed to go kill that moose. And I know you can hear me, Andrew. <laughs> Um, haven't even seen a caribou. It's it's 12:30, and I haven't seen a single caribou. I'm feeling like pretty good about my choice to shoot that bull, especially at this stage, because it seems as though it's like the spigot has shut off for the migration. And we might see some more trickle through, but we've seen just fewer and fewer caribou each day. And what was that two days ago now that I shot my caribou? That was a pretty good sized herd that I shot my caribou out of, but we've just seen a handful since then. So feeling quite grateful and, uh, and, and content that I just, that I was able to get a caribou when I did. It is about 4.15 and it has still been just dead quiet out here in terms of caribou and moose. Only thing we've seen is a lone gray wolf ambling across the meadow below us. And that is it.
we ended up seeing a lone bull caribou way off in the distance. So there are still some caribou that haven't migrated through here, but that is the only one we've seen all day. Ended up also seeing a couple of eagles feeding on my caribou carcass along with the wolves. Kind of made me uh, think about how everything comes full circle. There's no place that reminds you about the uh, cycle of life and that life eats life. And when you're on a place like this, it's just incredibly wild. You have all the predators that probably have always been here since probably the last ice age. Bears, wolves, etc. Place that just makes you feel really humble. Reminds you that you're not invincible. And at some point in time, we're all going to return to the earth. And I don't mean that in a morbid way, it's just kind of a fact. But tonight, we get to enjoy some backstrap, enjoy our last night in this amazing wilderness. And then for me, it's on to the next adventure. Got a moose hut coming up in just a couple days. I've got to figure out how to get my caribou meat and antlers back home. It's going to be a bit of a chore. Repack my gear, drop off Andrew at the airport, pick up Jason, off we go on the next hunt.